Today we will be looking at a very interesting tool known as ChatGPT which has been there since a few weeks now and it has taken the world by a storm. So if you are a developer, keep watching because I'm going to share my tips, my tricks and my hacks on how you can use this tool to your fullest. It's a free tool right now. It has some paid versions coming up but it is a free tool right now and let's see how you can learn programming using ChatGPT and you can use it as a developer in your day-to-day -day workflow. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow okay let's start with the first thing in order to access the chat gpt tool you have to go to chat.openai.com slash chat once you land on this tool once you log in click on this new chat feature which will start a new chat area and you can use this to ask any question you want now imagine if i'm a developer if i'm trying to learn something if i'm a new programmer what should i ask here the obvious question becomes that you ask for let's say resources or let's say websites or something which gets you started but the first thing which I would recommend is to not ask ChatGPT about resources and websites and things to learn. Why? Because the current model of ChatGPT is limited to 2021 and before. So it does not have any information about anything released after 2021. So it will not know about Next.js 13. It might not know about Remix. It might not know about a bunch of things which have released out there, right? New Cloudflare features, new Cloudflare services, maybe new AWS services. So it might lack on cutting edge technology but what it is good at it let's say if you're learning a specific programming language which has been there since let's say 15 20 years say javascript or python then it can really help you so my first suggestion is to use still use google for resources around what to learn how to learn how to start but use this in order to dig deeper into these resources in this video i'm going to take an example of html and css so let's say you're starting to learn with html and css course so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and resume this course let's say and I'm going to start from the very starting now this video is of course about introduction to HTML CSS so there is nothing not a lot to learn but what I would recommend is whenever you are purchasing a course or whenever you are starting a free course from YouTube keep a chart GPT tab open on the left right you can click on let's say we want to say about saying hello to HTML elements this is a video where you can go ahead and see me explaining you about different kinds of HTML elements and you're confused now right you have to ask a question what is the difference between div and let's say h2 for example so you can head over to chat gpt and you can ask what is the difference between div and h2 element but i'm going to let you in a secret this is actually a bad way to ask a question why because the more information you give chat gpt the better result you can expect from it so what you can do is you can include further information you can say i am learning html and css from a website i mean this is optional and i have a question around it related to html tags you can say now what is the difference between div and h2 element in HTML, give me an example if possible, right? Hit enter and leave the rest to chat GPT for you to answer. So you can see over here, it gave me a comprehensive answer that H2 and div are not really related. So that's completely fair. But you see that the more information you give, the better answers you get from chat GPT. Now, let's say you're learning about something around CSS properties and how to build simple web pages. So what you can do is again, go ahead on chat GPT and ask it, can you give me an example of an HTML plus CSS page which has four circles in red, green, blue and yellow colors with radius of anywhere between let's say 30 pixel to 100 pixel only drawn through HTML and CSS. So something like this can give you an example which you can again use to understand how various kinds of properties are working. So let's wait for ChatGPT to give you an answer. So you can see it gave you a complete example with a working HTML code and a working CSS code as well. It did not include the randomness which I asked, you know, like anywhere between 30 to 100 pixel. It has hard coded them all to 60 pixels, but that's fine what you can say is that you can do a follow-on question and answer with chat gpt that is like a power of it so you can ask it based on its last response itself like can you change all the color values to hex values instead so if you do something like this it will understand the context of the conversation and it will work accordingly right this value this statement on its own doesn't mean anything but if you look at the previous conversation then it makes sense that what you're trying to ask then as a follow-on question let's say if i'm a beginner developer i can also ask questions around these two blocks right so i can ask it why do we have 
border radius set as 50%. So you can ask these mini questions. And one thing which I would recommend is that as long as they are basic or simple questions, that's okay. If you feel like the answer is spooky or the answer might not fit according to what you think you have in mind, then just double check it once because ChatGPT sometimes confidently says things which are wrong, right? So it's not always, but sometimes that happens. So you see the actual answer to this question is in the last line, the 50% value for border radius makes sure the border radius properties half of the width and height of the element, making it a perfect circle, which is also right, right? So then we can ask that, why do you have display inline block instead of display block? So you see, you can cross question it. You can ask questions and it will answer you back. So you see it answers you correctly. Like the reason it used display inline block instead of display block is because I wanted the circles to appear side by side instead of getting stacked on top of each other. So, I mean, that's smart, right? Because it is using its own knowledge to do things which you have not even told the chat GPT bot to do it. So this is my another tip that is, you know, use chat GPT to take up a code, whatever you're learning, ask it to write the code itself. You don't even have to write that code. You can just ask it to generate the code just like we did. Then do some follow on questions with it based on whatever conversation you had, whatever you asked it to do. Now let's take a look at second use case of ChatGPT. This is when you're practicing or this is when you're doing something online, right? So you see that I'm on a lab where I have to use CSS class to style an element. So you can read about this description, but all we have to do over here is if you head into the challenges, you will see that our h2 element should be red should have the class red and all these things right so what i can do is i can actually just go ahead and copy this code go back to chat gpt and start writing and careful that when you're starting a new conversation or you know you might as well start a new chat when you're doing that just make sure to give it as much context as possible so you can say that i am practicing a coding lab on html and css on code dam and i need some help solving it then you can paste the code you can say the default code for index.html in the lab is then use the mark these three back text because these are the three back text which you usually use in markdown for formatting text right so i can just use html to denote that this is html code so these are markdown practices you don't necessarily have to know them but chat gpt would be able to you know make sense of this because it knows that you're writing code and this is where it ends right with these three back text again so what you can do now you can say i have to complete the following challenges can you do them for me and then you can go Go ahead and write the challenges which you have to complete and again this is something which you should do yourself after understanding and learning but this is one way you can ask it to you know complete the things for you and at the end of this whole chat you can also say ki also give me explanations of the things you wrote yourself as a solution and hit enter and just let it run through let it run its own course so you can see it gave me a perfect response once to an easy exercise it was not a very difficult exercise but you can see that it did not fail it added the red text class which was required it added it to the h2 element as well and it rewrote our style tag right so that it does not include h2 class directly instead it uses that so even if i go ahead and copy this code and paste it back on code dam and click on the run test button you're gonna see that it runs and passes the lab so chat gpt officially can pass a code dam lab that's awesome to know but you see this is interesting because you can ask it questions directly and it'll do it for you on the code level as well as long as you format your things properly like you know separate your code from your actual english text using back text, for example, specify a language as well alongside it and write clearly what you want it to do, maybe in bullet points, maybe in paragraph and ask it for an explanation as well. So before we move on to the next set of tips, let me just tell you how does this magic actually work. So ChatGPT is a tool built by OpenAI, which uses a model, a machine learning model, which is also built by them called as text DaVinci 003, which is what a lot of websites, a lot of APIs are also using built on top of OpenAI. And that is precisely what we do on code dam as well so if you take a look at this instant help button you're gonna see this chat box pretty much is what chat gpt also offers but this is inside baked inside your learning experience so what you can do is you can ask it anything you want just like you were asking chat gpt you can say what is the difference between h2 and p tag and the reason this will just work smoothly over here is that this is 
pre-trained or this is available on the course level structure itself. So ChatGPT is a generic tool, but this tool over here is focused for programming purposes for people who are writing or who are learning to code. So you can see it also gives you a quick example, quick and complete example. So that is how you can use instant help. Alongside this, you also have a bunch of brushes. So you can see these brushes can help you add types, make your code more readable, make your code cleaner. So if I select this and let's say if I click on this, making it more readable, you're going to see that this just converts it into a much more formatted code. So you can see it made your code more readable by, you know, making changes to a bunch of text. You can see it says no changes where it has not changed anything. It capitalizes stuff. It, you know, just makes it good even in the HTML world, right? So this is how it can help you make a better version of your code and better version of a developer yourself. Well, on top of this, ChatGPT can not only just answer your HTML and CSS questions, it can also help you with things like JavaScript and Node.js. So let's try to ask a few more things. Let me just go ahead and start a new chat and I'm going to say I am learning Node.js and I am confused with how to perform HTTP request in Node without any library. How can I do that with fetch. So you see, once I do that, it's gonna spit out a few comments, a few examples, a few things, and you can see the contrast where you can clearly recognize that this is not trained beyond 2021 because fetch is available into node.js now as of node 18. So you don't have to require a node fetch package, but it does not know that. So that is why I'm saying that, you know, if you're anything which you're learning, it's also better to have Google or an updated resource more than 2021 especially if you know that's a newer technology or you know or something which might have uh, updated in the time so you can see it answered you with a with an actual thing but what it does not have is the knowledge that fetch is included in the recent versions of node that's okay what you can again do is say can you convert this code for me in typescript so if you do that it will again work on it and convert it into typescript code which should be right i guess so you see it correctly converted now nothing into TypeScript because this did not need any TypeScript conversion because this was anyway typed like the fetch comes with typings inbuilt but what we can do over here we can ask him that can you convert this into async await structure instead of dot then or dot or callbacks, something like this. So you can see it clearly converted this into a proper async await thing, but it did not, it still has not made it completely type safe. So you can do this to and fro with this. You can say, but your code doesn't appear to have any types at all. Can you make the functions bit more type safe so you can see that i had to tell it two times in order to get him to add some types get the bot to add some types but again this is not the best right because this fetch anyway would return it as a response type only so it's not helping us a lot what would have helped us is that if it could have passed this json somehow as a type or you know at least return this as an unknown thing so that the someone else who is using this has to broadcast or has to convert this into a type thing this is not super helpful because these packages anyway if you have installed node types these packages anyway would have their own types but that's okay that's why you can see that chat gpt is not the best way right now but it still gets you a long long way ahead in terms of learning experience and anything you want to get started with so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully this will let you start with chart gpt and let you learn about programming in a better way if this helped you make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching